everybody. Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Man, if you are serious about promos, you don't want to miss these two episodes. We have Eric Poole of Second Sense Creative Production Company. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Okay, everybody, our guest is the co-founder and managing partner of Second Sense Creative Production Company here in Los Angeles. He also happens to have won more than 40 Clio and Promax Awards and is a published author. It's all in a day's work, people. We are so <laughs> excited to get buzzed with a totally awesome Eric Poole. Hey, Welcome. thanks, Chris Stacy. That you deserves a standing well, thank you. ovation. Thank you. Nice. Should I stand? No, I won't stand. Um, I know. Wow, man. So, so you've great. been busy. <laughs> I, I try to keep busy. Yeah, I like being busy. It's, it's I, so great to I've have you I've always said I'll, I'll work until I die if somebody will pay me. So. <laughs> I, 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 say, I always say, like, I'm going to go as hard as I can, as long as I can. Absolutely. You know, and then when it just says no, I'm going to, like, okay. So yeah. cool, man. <laughs> so great. Well, I mean, thank you for, you know, making a little time for us to come yeah. and I'm happy share. to be here. I'm happy mean, to be here. Gosh, I remember the last time that we saw you, it was uh, at Joe Cipriano's. His mm -hmm. promo and, extravaganza. Uh, had, uh, his promo <laughs> master. Promo master. Yes. And you were there uh, teaching or yeah. just, you know, directing. Mm -hmm. and, and we saw you in action. Yeah, it was Which is cool. Amazing. Because, man, as soon as we saw you, I told Stacey, wow, this guy's like, like Joe, way up there. Pro. Joe. <laughs> Joe's like, pro. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're like, we need Eric for the show. You so. know, it's funny because I hadn't done it in years. and Because when I was at Fox, I just did not have time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, um, but as soon as I did it again, I was like, oh, my God, I miss this. I love it. You know, yeah. it's just so great to be with, with And you can actors. tell. Oh, you can yeah. tell that, A, yeah. you love yeah. it. And A, you really, really know what you're doing. Know how oh. to capture mm -hmm. the essence yeah. of that room. Yeah. And your direction was so succinct. I mean, it just oh, turned it where I needed to go. So well, you know, it was so cool to watch that. And that's that. one of the funny things about, about radio is just that um, when people are doing on-air spots, uh, you know, you've got the benefit of picture, and yeah. so mm -hmm. it's a, it's easier to let a, an okay read slide. You can't do that in radio because yeah. that's all it you know that's all it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, absolutely. So it's got it's got to really sing. Mm -hmm. So I'm oh, kind of used awesome. to trying to work with them. Yeah, we're definitely going to talk a little bit more about that. But let's start. Let's, let's go a little back and talk about your company, uh, Second Sense Creative, which mm -hmm. I love the name, Second oh, Sense Creative. Um, what happens there? What goes on there on a daily on a daily basis? What do you guys do? Um, we do um, a lot of promo stuff. We do a lot of stuff for Fox and, and networks like that. We also do advertising for um, both both with agencies and then direct with clients, right. um, which are two completely different sort of ball games, you know. But uh, it's just a lot of commercial work and a lot of promo work, and and we have a great time. There's you know you're writing, casting. Um, uh, Doing sessions, producing. And you know. producing. Yeah. So you're, you're actually recording as well, right? Yeah. And yeah. then posting and doing all that as well? Absolutely. Fantastic, man. Yeah. yeah. I how love how that. many people are are, are doing? Is there is there a small team or is yeah. there a large team? Yeah, yeah. just three of us. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's wow, it. you guys are pumping all that stuff out. Yeah. But they're no so talented. Have we, do, we do have a couple of freelancers yeah, as well, yeah, but you know. But, but their talent stuff. is so massive that they're like six people in one. They're like they're like exactly. Amazon. So. <laughs> yeah. Squared. Yeah. Well, what is some? What are some of the things you love about your work, and what are some of the challenges about it? Um, I love almost everything about it. The, you know, the, probably the biggest challenge is, um, uh, and this probably applies more to promos than it does to, to commercial work, because commercial work tends to be a little farther out and there's a little more um, time for people to digest right, and, right, and right. you know in promos it tends to be very quick turnaround and so a lot of times that'll mean hair on fire oh the schedule just changed now it's this show following this show we've got to redo stuff right, yeah. you know there's some of that that goes on in promo and that's just you know it's par for the course right right yeah. keeps it exciting it does, it does. <laughs> <laughs> no day is ever the same yeah hey yeah, can we real. discuss because you kind of like talking about this a little bit <laughs> but the difference between maybe a TV promo read and a radio promo read. Yep, um, TV promo reads, I don't mean to dismiss them in any way because it's it's its own art form and all yeah, that. Yeah. It's just, uh, generally speaking, a little less emphasis is placed on the read because you've got the benefit of the picture. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, in radio, it's every word matters, you know, because it, that's the whole, that and music are pretty much all you've got. Right. So we really focus, for, for starters, we, um, record the, the VO independently. We don't put people into a track. 
I'm, I'm not a fan of that at all because, right. okay. um, and, you, and a, lot, a lot of on-air spots are done that way because you know the the, the, the spots already been cut and so mm -hmm. they just need to insert yep. the, the mm -hmm. VO into it. But um, in radio, I like to to record the VO first and then build the spot around the announcer so that we can let them breathe where they need to. We yeah. can they're not trying to because I don't feel like you're always getting the best read possible when someone's trying to fit into time. Right, it's like two point three exactly. seconds. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. And mm -hmm. you know the top people can do that. Almost to you know to a T, yeah. but right, right. nonetheless, I still feel like you get a better read if you just let people read as naturally as they would, you know, yeah. and then work it because you, you know there's a million miracles you can do these days with compression and right. expansion yep. and all these yep. kind of the old tools. slide. Yes, we're gonna yep. slide so, that over. So, <laughs> so, so are the radio reads a little bit more kind of like captivating? Like they need to really have a little bit more yeah, color, a little more oomph, yeah, mm -hmm. more oomph, yeah. And then the oomph can be different things depending on the product yeah. and what you're promoting, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think they definitely have to have that. So going in, for example, if it's a drama uh -huh. type show and you're directing that talent, you're going for that drama read, right? It's not just like, More oh, whatever comes out, comes out, we'll turn it into a drama. No, exactly. It has to be the right read. Exactly. And then when you're comfortable with that naked voice and have it be like, Ooh, wow, I feel that without anything, then you create stuff around that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. that's really cool. And you know, and that, that, that brings up something which is just, you have to be an actor. Of course. You know, yes. in this business. There are people who have great voices who think that, I've got a great voice, I'm gonna make a million dollars as a yeah. voiceover person. It's I, quick, uh, easy money voiceover. Uh, Don't you right. know that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've known a couple of people who were fairly and I'm certainly not going to name names, but who are fairly successful voiceover people. Name at people. least one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> who read every freaking line yeah. the same way. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, you, you really don't understand how to interpret copy. Absolutely. You know? Telling and that's the story. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, it's so here, here's mm -hmm. something quick, because you're right. Acting is so, so important in all genres of voiceover. But what do you feel is the difference between, like, for example, on a commercial, when they want you know, a real actor, it's for you to be natural mm -hmm. and, uh, and conversational and really uh -huh. sound like you're not acting, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in promo, in your opinion, what is great acting on a promo read? Well, it depends on what you're promoting, what the show is and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I heard Tom Pinto say on one of yours, and I really loved this comment, mm -hmm. which was, um, uh, you know, because so often agents will say uh, it's a conversational read. Yeah. Conversational yes. and what? And yes, you know. qualifying the conversation. Exactly, yes. because there's so many variations of that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And conversational really just means you're talking to the the viewer, the listener, like they're right. like you know, like you're sitting in a room with them. But but you still have to tell a story. You still have to describe. You right. still have to make still them the feel colors, something. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. where the mm -hmm. acting comes in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you guys are producing a spot, say for you know Hell's Kitchen on Fox, which you guys do, right? Mm -hmm. And do you always use or typically use maybe the same uh, announcer that they use for the TV stuff on the radio stuff? Um, these days, yes, just because um, the way that Fox works and the way a lot of the networks work is you come into the process so late with the radio that so much on air has already been done that they yeah. basically just want you to use whoever's been mm -hmm. on the on air campaign. When I worked at Fox, it was a different story because I had more impact on that exactly. scenario because yeah. we would start the process much earlier. Yeah. Right. Plus, yeah. they probably want to stay true to brand and right. not, you right. know. Yeah. For example, um, Chris Corley does all the Gordon Ramsay shows for Fox. So right. he's the right. voice of everything that's Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. So. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So he's good. a he's an interesting example of um, it's what I always say about radio. I, I always say to actors, to voiceover actors, be nice to the radio guy because yeah. even though he's low man on the totem pole, yeah. um, I introduced uh, Chris to Fox, and he ended up. This was very early on in his career when he was mm -hmm. just doing like um, local radio station or le like TV and radio station IDs and things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And um, his agent pushed him, and and I uh, gave him a shot, and they liked him so much that they started using him in, in all kinds of you know right. shows on Fox, mm -hmm. and then you know that just um, ballooned from there. Yeah. And you know now he's a top guy, and yeah. he is, yeah. man. And you're responsible. Well, well my goodness I'm gracious. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but it was no, no, it no. was it was definitely helpful to him, and yeah. I'm glad it was because he's fantastic at what he does, yeah. and Absolutely. you know, and a really yeah. nice guy. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, well, but, that's the but thing. it's a great reminder. I mean, you know, kindness and and you know. Just just human decency That's what I was gonna is say. huge. I mean, I, I've been places where the receptionist has turned into a booth director, has turned into a casting director. Oh my I mean, God, yeah. you just can't, you, it's just, but we're people. Like yeah. you should, I don't care who you are, if you're the messenger, you should treat people beautifully. That's, I mean, why that's not? That's so right. I have a friend who's a TV casting director who started out as a lowly, you know, assistant yeah. in, a, in a casting company and he now casts a whole bunch of big shows. Mm -hmm. And he remembers those people who were 
horrible to him when he yeah, was, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I have a question for you, and maybe you can't answer this because you might get in trouble. Uh, so I probably <laughs> will. But if you can, uh, <laughs> and this might even be a silly question, but but what if you? So, because right now you're kind of like conforming to what the network kind of wants, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much, like yeah. you have to stay within their parameters. Right. If you didn't have to do that, if you could do your parameters and use your ideas and do things your way and or the highway, would you do things differently? And what part of it would you do differently that you feel would be more effective? Well, it's funny because I was at Fox for 15 years. And within that time frame, I got to try a lot of things because we had uh, creative management who would allow that, and that yeah. was really awesome. Um, we tried so many different approaches. Some worked great, some not so great. Um, you know, the interesting thing is we did testing several times over the years to see like what people responded to. Mm -hmm. And it was really difficult to sort of ultimately ascertain because People are so used to hearing promos a certain way, both TV and, and radio, you know. Right. And so they, for, for example, they respond more positively to male announcers because that's what they're used to. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that female announcers aren't every bit as good. And in fact, they can have more breakthrough quality just because right. they're female, you right. know, and it's different. Right. But um, it, it's a really difficult thing. Like I could say I would do things completely different than the way I have to do them. but that doesn't mean it's better. You know what I mean? Like, I think that you can do that more with advertising than you can with promo. Right. right. You know what I mean? Yes. You can be more out of the box with, with advertising spots because people are accustomed to that more. Mm -hmm. With promos, there's a, there is a sort of, sort of standard formula. Now, within that, you can vary it up. You can use a female announcer. You can do a conversational thing as opposed to the, you know, the voiceover or voiceover sound bite, voiceover sound bite mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. Um, there are small variations you can do within that that do change it up enough to make it interesting. Thing. Yep. But yeah. Cool. It's a great point though. Absolutely, man. Yeah. This guy's smart. He's smart. I'm glad no, we're having him on um, the show. <laughs> but when just just switching gears a little bit, when you think about um, you know, your career as it's progressed along the way, and we and we want to go into the backstory a little bit. Um, but was there any advice that you got along the way that you feel like really guided you in your career, either what to do or what not to do? Um, well, I watched the people who were my bosses, you know. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say some, somebody gave me advice so much as I just learned by modeling, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some of it good, some of it bad. You know, I had an early boss when I first moved out here who was very creative and a freaking handful, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? The kind who would like throw a telephone across the room, that sort right, of thing. Right. Wow. Um, and, and, and then I had... Uh, high strong, a little yeah, high strong. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, and so, you know, you, you learn from those things just as well as you learn from somebody who's great and kind and, mm -hmm. and you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think I can't really focus on one, you know, piece of advice that really helped me. But I, I think the biggest things I learned were to be nice. Just be nice, you know. Yeah. And I, I always say this to talent, too. You know, be, the things like be on time, be, be friendly, be, you know, be accommodating. I always say to talent these days, especially because there are so many more deals being struck and stuff right. that kind of circumvent um, the traditional yeah, means. Yeah. That, that like, for example, if, if somebody screws up, a producer screws up and they're like, oh, I forgot to record a line or I need a variation on this line or something, just do it for free and say thank you and move on. You know, in the old days, 10, 15 years ago, um, the, the, you would talk to their agent and the agents go, that's going to be another session fee and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that stuff doesn't go down so well now. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. oh, just a little bit of flexibility on the talent's part helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's remembered, I'm sure. Yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah. So obviously, when you're doing commercial, many times you have talent coming in. Mm -hmm. Promo and with the quick turnaround, most of the time is done from wherever everyone is. Yes. Do you have, um, you know, because obviously there's ISDN, Source Connect, IPDTL. Do you have any feelings or beliefs about the different platforms and what's working, what's not? What should where, they you know, have what, or I, maybe not necessary? I Well, I think ISDN is still very much a standard, at least with, with networks and yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very, very difficult to get now. You know, I, 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 a friend of mine was opening a studio and he said, I spent so many hours on the phone with AT&T trying to, to right. just find somebody who knew about the product yes. and could help me and so, right. because they don't want to deal with no. it anymore. Well, and it's, the cost now is going yeah. crazy in some parts yeah. of the country, yeah. yeah because absolutely. they need a DSL line, right? <laughs> right. Like that. Yeah. Right. DSL! Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. who yeah. is that? Yeah. So, um, 
Uh, Source Connect is a big one. The, mm. the, the issue there, of course, is you need really good solid bandwidth and stuff right. because if there's little out. hiccups and stuff, yeah, yeah you can have drop yeah. out and stuff. Um, I, I wouldn't say that there's any one that you need to have. Um, th there's a lot of phone patching that's done too, you know, mm -hmm. and where I'm um, just on the phone, they're recording it on their end, and, and then they just post right, it for right. us. So, are you noticing any difference if someone's using IPDTL? Do you have any feeling of, of like, can you go, oh, I can tell, or I can't tell? To be honest, not really. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a problem with either one of those. I'm, you know, we're happy to use whatever talent has. Yeah. Um, and you know those ones, the digital ones are much more, are really much more economical. So right. yeah. You know. yeah. So basically, yeah. you're not like, oh, if you don't have ISDN, no. forget yeah. about it. We no. can't work together. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, the nice thing about radio too is because you're not reading to picture; they're literally just reading. Exactly. So you can you can work with just about anything. Yeah. yeah. Except bad sound. Except bad sound. Except yeah. bad sound. Oh, let's talk about bad sound real quick. This the shoebox is never good. So yeah, uh, yeah so, that shoebox. So sound. seriously speaking. Um, what is, in your opinion, something that's just not acceptable as far as quality in your studio? And what are some things that you have grown to expect from somebody's home studio? Um, I don't think I've ever gotten a... No, I take that back. I just had a, a, an example <laughs> where somebody sent me partial takes. I didn't get the whole session. Oh. Um, I, I, I don't think I've ever had a sound problem from somebody's home studio. Um, except in auditions, I, I've had you know have had shitty auditions where right. it's been like I can't believe you even sent that in because right. it sounded really awful. And so but, what do you do with that? Do you say oh, but, but the it, reed ro rose yeah. above, or do you just say no because you're, you're thinking you're also aren't you also in many cases hiring the studio sound as well as the actor? Yeah, so. I, I a lot of times with auditions I'll I'll cut them some slack because it may have been somebody recording on their iPhone right. on the go they couldn't get home to do it or whatever mm -hmm. you know because so much of that is done remotely and and yeah. uh, you Absolutely. know in people's free time sort of you know that that I cut them some slack with that as long as it's as long as it's good enough to show a client if I need to mm -hmm. you know um, but like I said I don't think I've ever had um, an issue with with a session coming from their end um, being bad. With an actual session, yeah. 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 Otherwise, you wouldn't be working right. with them. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that, that would be a deal breaker, honestly. Yeah, Eric's yeah. being really <laughs> nice right now, by so the way. Nice. Because I've seen Such other producers nice go like, what? <laughs> if you don't care, why should I? Next! Well, and, and that um, would probably be true if I had that. Drag to the trash. I'm lucky, yeah. I guess. I haven't had yeah. that happen. Yeah. So. yeah. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your standards are high. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, because you do casting as well, do you have any thoughts about, let's, let's go with promo first, any interpretation tips or self-direction tips when it comes to promo? Well, are we talking about auditions or the actual session? Auditions. auditions. One thing I always say about auditions is do the first take the way they want you to do it. I am all for doing something unique, but I think you have to give it to them the way they want it first because writers and producers are territorial people, you know? Yeah. They created a character or whatever they think this is, you know, and, and they're just as attached to it as you are, and mm -hmm. so it's best to give them what they want first, and then in a second or third take, you do something completely different. Right. And I'm all for that, because I, a, a good example was I was doing a, a Rocky Horror Picture Show, Fox redid it yes, um, a yes. while back, and, and I made a new movie out of it, and uh, I was casting the voice of that, and that was a situation where, because it was a special, I was able to use, um, I, I was the one who cast the voice that mm -hmm. they ended up using on air. But um, uh, the, the voice actor that I hired ended up doing something so unique on his second or third take that I was like, oh my God, that's better than what I had thought. Beautiful. And so I was like, you know, yeah, he got the job yeah. because he came up with something better than I could have. So. Mm -hmm. But Beautiful. definitely honor what honor is on the, the page first. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Commercially too, how, are you, how do you feel about ad libs? I love ad libs personally. Well, it. mostly because I do a lot of comedy stuff. Yes. So I, I, I love ad libs because, in fact, I have hired, I can't tell you how many people over the years just because they threw in some really funny bits. And I'm like, well, you should be, I'm going to use that. So you should be rewarded. <laughs> because, yes. uh, Good for you. Look at you with your integrity. Well, you know, I'm well, I mean, they have to be good too. But. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. That's Man, great. you are just such a wealth of information. It Thank is. you. Sure. Um, uh, how, did you, how did you find your way? <laughs> from uh, St. Louis, right, mm -hmm. to, to Hollywood. 
Well, I, I came out with a friend because we wanted to write sitcoms. Mm -hmm. We had written a spec script for the Golden Girls, and this is, this is the really long version of this story. And um, we got it to Christopher Lloyd, who's one of the creators of Modern right. Family. He was on Golden Girls at the time, and he was kind enough to read the script and check all the jokes he liked and write encouraging comments. And we're like, Hollywood's calling. They're, you know, they're ready for us. So we moved out, and it's, it's a long and lurid story. I won't bore <laughs> you with it all. But uh, anyway, um, I was working for a com radio commercial production company out here. They were sort of the kings of radio commercials. Um, and... Uh, so I just sort of fell into that end of the business. I'd been working in an ad agency prior to that, and mm -hmm. so um, I didn't ever intend to just end up in radio, but it just sort of worked out yeah. that way. You yeah. know, you know how those things go. Yep. And then that commercial production company kind of hit the skids because one of the owners was a nutbag, and um, <laughs> they're not bag. around anymore, so I can say I that. I love it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, um, and so then I was self-employed for a bit, and then I went to Fox. Yeah. So. And so you were the VP of Radio Promotion and Marketing mm -hmm. at Fox for yeah. 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Is that a gig? It was a good that, run. It was good. Run. It was like five, you know, different marketing yeah. Yeah. heads. Is that a gig yeah. that you had to audition for? That you kind of like Interview sought well, out? I did. Yeah. A friend of mine brought me in to do uh, like the May sweeps to like. Mm -hmm. With her to produce all, write and produce all the stuff for for the May Sweep. They just liked me, and so they called me after that and said, "Would you like to come in and run our radio department?" And I was like, "No, not really." Um, like, and that, I write comedy. <laughs> I'm a singer. Well, I was just like, I just didn't know if I wanted to work, you know, at a network because yeah, I yeah. liked. I, I was I hadn't been self-employed very long, but I liked it, mm -hmm. and um, that was sort of the magic word because then they had to have me, so it became a whole negotiation right. thing, and, and it worked out to my advantage. You couldn't so. say no. Then exactly. I couldn't say no. It was one right. Of those right. Yeah. Man, that is so yeah. cool. <laughs> I love it. That's but it was cool. a great place to work for all, for a very long time. I mean, it was a really happy environment, and we had mm. good management. Well. After the first, after the first set left, the we regime, had good management. Yeah. The regime changed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're working with talent day in, day out. Mm -hmm. Any do's and don'ts regarding to auditions that you could share for talent? Sure. Uh, one is w what I was talking about before, which is always do it the way they want first, and right. then mm -hmm. and then do something different. And don't be afraid to go balls out, completely wacko on your on your your extra reads, you know, yeah. because I'm very much a fan of somebody trying something new and different because you never know when you're going right. to discover something that's better than what you thought of, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, another one is get your reads in on time because, oh, yeah. um, you know, and it's not the agent's fault, but it, okay, from time to time I'll get just like stray extra reads and stuff and a lot of times the decision's been made by that point, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel bad for those people because they, they were doing their best to get it in, but, it, you know, try yeah. to get it in whenever the deadline is. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me think, is there anything else I would say about auditions oh um notice the time the length of the spot and you know if it's a 30 second spot don't don't make it a 60 second read you know because it's really hard for us to tell what you're going to sound like but you what it has to be what it has to be emotional yeah. arc you have to yeah. do it yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, you'd be amazed your you'd be academy amazed, award winning yeah, exactly. yeah exactly yeah. if really. it's yes. let's say you know a uh, 15 second promo mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you want the read to actually come in at 15 seconds, no. or would it be better to have it even a little short, like 10 seconds? I don't care so much about that. It doesn't have to be right on time or anything, yeah. but just just be conscious of it and don't turn a 15 ballpark. into a 30 or that right. sort of thing. Right. You know, yeah. But Within is under better than over? I don't think that matters either. Okay. Um, mostly because we'll compress it a little if we need to or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'd almost rather it be, probably if I was going to air, I'd say a little over than under, just because, like I said, we can always compress it. And mm -hmm. that generally won't take as much flavor out of it as it will if the if the actor's reading faster. Yeah. Right. Unless they're one of the really experienced people who can exactly. shave, you know, three tenths of a second off and know exactly what they're mm -hmm. doing with that. Yeah. You know. yeah. Well that's part one with the super cool Eric Poole. We'll mm -hmm. be back next week with part two. Yes we will. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and just remember you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.